Being a successful hairstylist with a long career isn't about how many followers you have on social media. And it's definitely not about having all your clients as friends. And no, it's not about how many times you say the word on your social media. I've been a hairstylist and hair colorist for 37 years, and I'm gonna share my five top tips with you in this video on how you can keep your clients happy, make them feel great, and ultimately make money. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me, I'm Craig, and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. Now you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen that intro. This is all about being a successful ha hairstylist and making yourself money and having a long career making clients feel great. This is not a get quick, get quick rich, get rich quick video. That's the one, put your teeth in. It's not a video that's about that. It's a video where I share my insight with you over the last 37 years. I have a long-standing client base. Many of them have been clients of mine for 35 years. I have a very high retention rate. I love people. I absolutely love people. Not all the time. Sometimes it's nice to be here at home on my own, often. And when I'm not in the salon or when I'm not on a session job or when I'm not teaching and all of those things. But... You know, I was with a client the other day, a new client who comes to me through a social media platform. She'd found me on Instagram and I was talking to her and she shared some of her experiences with me and it made me think of this video. So whether you've been hairdressing for 30 years and you just wanted some insight into how my brain works when it comes to, goodness me, when it comes to clients in the salon and, and other clients when I'm freelancing, or maybe you're new to the industry or maybe you're a client and you just wanted to listen to my insight and how I think about things and maybe that will help you find a hairstylist that's right for you. But I do feel very strongly about all of this, that's why I'm in a black roll neck and now I'm just waffling. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one. Very briefly, just to mention as the sun comes out, if you're not here for this video, that's completely fine. That's completely fine, I'm down with that. But there is a ton of hair education here on my channel. As my channel is growing, I'm getting lots of comments where they're saying, I'd like a video on this, or I'd love you to make a video on this. Remember, if you leave me a comment or ask me a question, I will always, always, always get back to you, always. I'm still bewildered that it astounds people that I get back to them, but I'm getting lots of comments where, could you make a video on this? Well, I've already got a video on that, and I've already got a video on that, and they're all in playlists. So there's tons of free hair education. It will always be free here on my channel, so please have a look around. But if you do leave me a question or a comment, I will always get back to you. Now, and if you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, you know what to do. Number one, now this is probably the most important thing when you are dealing with people, and that is learn to listen. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the salon or whether it's day-to-day -day life. And you know, I'm not a psychologist, but I have spent a lot of time around people. And the, the number one tip for me to you as a hair pro or just as a human being in life is learning to listen. It's so important. I've worked with so many hair professionals over the years who don't listen and they don't become, you know, it takes them a lot longer to become successful. And from my point of view, my opinion, having had my own salon for 10 years in the West End of London, 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, and you know, having a long standing client base and also doing the freelance stuff that I do, you need to be able to listen. Because how are you else are you going to extract from your clients what it is that they want to have done? You know, all too often I hear stories from new clients or from, you know, people when I'm out doing other things where they just tell me that they've just not been listened to. Recently, the client that made me think of this video when I was doing the consultation, who was a new client, had come to me, who I already mentioned, and she said she just didn't feel that she was being listened to where she was getting her hair done. And the hairdresser actually said, we'll get into this more in another one of the points, but actually said to her, no, 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 you don't know. No, it's just leave it with me. You don't know. And I mean, that's shocking as far as I'm concerned, because it is all about listening. Here's a little top tip for you. The next time you have an exchange with somebody who's an acquaintance who you don't know and who isn't a client, practice listening. You know, I do it all the time. I might be in a shop and I might be paying for something and I might just say to somebody, how's your day been? I'm miming somebody being here. How's your day been? 
and then just listen to what it is they have to say. We have such busy lives and I understand that salon life is busy. Trust me, I've worked in a salon in summers for 37 years. I understand, I know, I feel it. I feel you. But listening is so powerful, becoming a good listener. So tip one, if you just take one thing from this video and you know, I appreciate all of you and I appreciate you watching this and I do hope this is helpful, but please learn to become a good listener. Let the client that comes to you for the first time tell you what they want and just listen before you then interject. Let the client that you've seen for years and years and years, you've gone to their home to do their hair and you know they want something different, just listen to what it is they want before you give your advice. A client that you've seen for 20 years is telling you about something personal in their life. And I know that as hair professionals, we are great listeners, but just listen before you interject. Listening is powerful and it helps us create great professional and non-professional, but relationships in the salon, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, are professional, professional relationships with our clients, which ultimately will make us successful hair professionals. Number two is a continuation on from number one, and that is, it's not about you. Controversial yet bold, it isn't about us as hair professionals. Some of you watching this may disagree, but it really isn't. And the minute that I got my head around that, throughout my 20s, there were times when I would perhaps pirouette into a salon and it would all be very shalala and it would be about me. But the minute I understood that it really isn't about me. I am a conduit to give people great hair and make them feel good. It, that's what it is. You know, it is a combination of technical skill and being able to be good with people. And you know, is it a 50-50 split? I don't know, but it is a combination of the two. Okay, I've worked with people who are brilliant technical hairdressers, incredible, some of the best in the world, and they're terrible with people, and it takes them much longer to build up their client base, and they don't get so much joy from their work. The same way that I have worked with people who are, you know, really gregarious, really outgoing, and, you know, big, 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 big characters, and they're not very brilliant technical hairdressers, but they have huge client bases that they have for a long time, and they make a lot of money. But it really isn't about us as hair professionals. And again, you are more than welcome to disagree with me, but it's a very powerful thing when you pull back. And of course, you know, you shouldn't, you should always come first as a human being. Yes, that's really important. And that's something else that we have to come to terms with as human beings in my book is that, yes, you put yourself first, but when you're in the salon or at someone's house or, you know, on a session job or whatever it is you're doing, it is not about you, it's all about them. Moving on to number three, and that is empathy. Empathy is extremely important in the industry that we are in as hair professionals, but it's extremely important in life. And it's something that sometimes people have to work on, and that's completely, you know, it is what it is. We are all individuals and unique, and that is great. I am very fortunate, grateful, extremely grateful that I've had the career that I've had. I've worked very hard at it, but part of the thing that has made me an empath is the people that I have had exposure to, both my clients who I'm very grateful for and I really enjoy their company and for the people that I've worked with in teams and the teammates I've worked in with salons and the freelance stuff that I've done and the people that have come to my classes. I'm grateful for all of them and all of you, if that is you, thank you very much. And it's hard for me not to get emotional talking about a lot of this because it's stuff I feel really, you know, is so important in what we do, having exposure to people. But I want to share with you an example of perhaps a lack of empathy. The world has changed. I still have, I work with somebody um, who books, a front of house who books my appointments, who's a salon manager, May. She's amazing, the best. I, I am extremely grateful for her. And, but I know a lot of people take their own appointments. I do a few of mine, but I know that a lot of you watching this will take your own appointments through text messages, social media, etc., etc. And I want to share a kind of scenario with you. For example, somebody has done someone's hair, a hair pro has done someone's hair, and they get a text message the following day to say that they've got home and their partner has said, oh, you're not quite as blonde as you were before. 
So they, you get a text message, they get a text message to the hair professional to say that, that they're not happy with their hair. And the response that they get is something like, and I have seen examples of this before, a few times, and I have also seen this kind of chat on social media, Facebook, which I don't go on, sorry Meta, I try, not, I try to avoid Facebook if I can. And the response from the hair professional is, well, it looked great when you left the salon, or, well, I did a great job, or, well, why don't you like it? None of those responses have any empathy. The response that has empathy is, I'm really sorry, that you don't like your hair, let's sort it out. I personally would never ever suggest, well I would never ever suggest, that you deal with a situation like that through messages and get them to send you pictures and then you send it to copy back and text and this and that and you tell them that you're brilliant and this, it, I just, there's no empathy in it. I would, in the rare occasion, and I'm very grateful that I've done this for a long time and I have the relationships that I have with my clients because of the things I'm talking about in this video. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect, no one is perfect. We all have, you know, we all have our moments. But if somebody was to contact my front of house and say, you know, I'm not happy with my hair, I would ask, and we have a policy in the salon anyway, that you would then get them to come back into the salon as soon as they can, as soon as it's possible for them to do so, and you would talk it out face-to-face, -face, listening, and express empathy. And that makes a huge difference in general life, not just in what we do as hair professionals. Rather than wading into something in a, in a, you know, in a communicative way, but over text message where it's, you know, you can't see the person and there's so much that's lost and it just can get it really murky and really unpleasant. So, number three would be empathy. Number four is a no-brainer, and it's something I'm extremely passionate about because I give it all away for free from me to you, so you can take it and make it your own, and that is education, knowledge. Knowledge is key. It's key to any creative industry. It's key, it's key to any kind of career in life, isn't it? You have to have the knowledge in order to be able to excel, excel at it. And again, how amazing that we live in a world if you are me, this is me, who can watch videos before they go to bed at night, my bed is over here, over the other side of that wall. Before I, before I go to bed at night, I can watch hair color videos or I can read technical data about products or I can read about formulation, I can read science papers, all for free. It's all out there. And, or you can obviously go and do education that you pay for as well, but there is so much at our fingertips. As, hair professionals that can help us to be better at what we do. And knowledge really is key. You know, the, the, the box dye, the home hair colour that you're, you know, that you don't like and that you really poo-poo, there's a word, there's a phrase, that you really, really, you know, put down because you don't know how to deal with it. You know, the, the nuance of a root shadow that confuses you or the or not being able to style hair in a certain way. All of those things are things that you can perfect and you can learn, even if it is in your apartment with a mannequin head, you know, one of the pivot point manne mannequin heads or any other mannequin head of which my office over here is full of. Education is very powerful and non knowledge is very powerful, which is what number four actually was, is knowledge, not education, but it encompasses that. So, you know, if there's something that has been bothering you that you just can't quite get your head around or there's something you've wanted to be le to learn for a little while in order to further your career, something a client has asked for and you're not quite sure how to go about it, please, please, please get hold of that education, that knowledge, because it's really powerful and it can help you become more successful. And finally, number five, as the sun comes out again, I apologise if the sun is going in and out, but this is the UK and the weather is very unpredictable. Oh, yeah, there it goes, it's going again. Number five is never work for free. No, never work for free. One of my first bosses in London, Rick, he won't see this, he used to say to me, I rem remember once asking him if I could bring someone in to cut their hair, a friend, and he said to me, are you in a relationship with them? Are you having a relationship with them and I said no he said well you can't sorry that's the only he said to me that's the only person that should get a free haircut from you 
Do I still agree with him? Perhaps no. I do the odd one of my friend's hair every now and then, but they will always treat me to something or they'll pay for the product, etc., etc. But should you work for free? No, you really shouldn't. It's very important as far as I'm concerned. And that doesn't matter whether it's an in-salon situation. Obviously, if it's something you're doing that's, you know, putting something, making a client happy that wasn't happy with a the result, then that's completely fine. But as far as services go, no, you shouldn't work for free. And that the same goes for if you're somebody watching this who wants to do brand work, you know, wants to um, get in doing stuff with brands, become an ambassador. You shouldn't do that for free either. Everything should have a price. You should know your worth. It's very important as creative people. I speak to lots of hairdressers and I, and I, over the years, and a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, but I just find it tricky to charge and this, that. Why? It's your job. And products cost a lot of money and your time also should have a price. I price my services by the hour, colour services, in fact, all my services, but I price my services by the hour and they include all products because that works for me. It might not work for you, but it did make things much more, you know, much more streamlined and much simpler for me as a hair professional. But please, never work for free. And if a brand asks you to work for free, you know, I would really seriously ask, you know, ask them what it is that you're going to get from that working for free if you want to go ahead and do that. But I would still advise you not to. Time is money. Your time is precious. You have knowledge, experience, all of those things. So therefore, that has a price. Don't work for free. So thank you if you've come this far and you've watched to the end of the video. But to summarise, learn to listen. It's not about you. Empathy is key. Knowledge is power and so important in what we do as hair professionals. And never, never work for free. That's my opinion. All opinions are my own, obviously. But hopefully this video will help you or at the very, very least help you to understand how it is that I go about doing things in my day-to-day -day when I'm dealing with clients who, you know, I mean, I just love what I do and hair is my life. It has been for all this time and it's, yeah, it just makes me feel very, lots of love. As I mentioned earlier on, if you leave me a comment or a question down below in the, in the comments, that's the one, I will always reply to you. It's fantastic to get your comments. I love it. And as my channel is beginning to grow, it's just, yeah, I just feel, it feels so good. Um, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then you know exactly what to do. Liking this video is really helpful, as is leaving a comment because it helps the algorithm. And of course, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell to turn on your notifications because I post weekly here on my channel. Goodness, that's a lot to say. A huge thank you for watching this. You all take lots of care and I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah.